Hi, my name is Patrick Ward, and today we're going to explore Cabrini Green, a public housing development on Chicago's near north side. Cabrini Green has always been somewhat of a conundrum since it was a crime-ridden development located directly next to some of Chicago's most coveted real estate. The implementation of urban redevelopment practices in Chicago reveals the cultural and economic significance of urban renewal because it shows how public policy plays a massive role in the well-being of citizens, especially those who are residents of public housing. In this short film, I have documented the details and the history of Cabrini Green to shed light on the shaky history as Chicago has had in terms of public safety and government priorities. The little known history of urban planning is relevant today because we are at a time in society where racial issues are under a microscope and this public housing catastrophe shows that our country has had a long history of cultural and socioeconomic issues and that we all must continue to fight for justice for all citizens from all backgrounds. In the early 1940s, World War II was coming to an end and many veterans and war industry workers were coming back home and did not have a place to live. This brought about the construction of the Francis Cabrini Green Homes in the near north side of Chicago. Once the veterans came home and settled in the newly built Cabrini Green complex, the Chicago Housing Authority became the biggest landlord in Chicago. After the post-war rush, there became a shift in the demand for public housing. An influx of African Americans migrating from the South due to injustice now needed a place to live, and the Chicago Housing Authority stepped in and provided them housing at Cabrini Green. This led to great segregation, however, as the post-war residents did not want to live in the same community as the Southern migrants. As a result, the veterans moved out, leaving Cabrini Green with a predominant African American population. The racial tensions occurring at Cabrini Green in the 1960s mirrored the rest of the country, as the fight for African-American equality was on in full force. It was only worsened by the fact that most of the African-American residents of Cabrini Green had lived there for a long time, unable to escape the cycle of poverty. This led to rampant gang violence and drug abuse, crippling the Cabrini Green community even further. Riots were not uncommon at Cabrini Green, especially after the death of Martin Luther King Jr. in 1968, who had visited Cabrini Green in the past. The problems became increasingly worse, however, when in August of 1970, two police officers, Sergeant James Severin and Patrolman Anthony Rosado, were shot down by sniper rifles out of the sixth floor window of one of Cabrini Green's towers. In 1981, Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne moved into Cabrini Green in order to prove her determination to reduce crime in her city. This was a shocking political stunt, as many Chicagoans feared she was putting her life in danger just to show she cared for her cause. 1981 was one of the worst years for Cabrini Green, as there were 11 gang murders in just the first few months. Burns live-in at Cabrini Green proved to be a major failure for two reasons. First, she put her life in danger by staying in one of Chicago's most dangerous developments. She also made more Chicagoans aware of how dangerous the place is by showing that there is nothing she can do to stop the violence. Byrne moved out of Cabrini Green just a few weeks after she moved in. The problems at Cabrini Green did not get any better as time went on, and in 1987 a Chicago Tribune article reported that violent crime reported at Chicago Housing Authority developments jumped by 31% last year, more than twice the city-wide increase. It was clear to Chicago residents and government officials alike that Cabrini Green was not a sufficient solution to the public housing crisis. This is where the politics of the situation come in play. Cabrini Green has always been managed by the Chicago Housing Authority. However, in 1995, the federal government intervened and took control of the Chicago Housing Authority. This was an unprecedented move as the Chicago Housing Authority was the second largest housing agency in the country. It was the largest ever federal takeover of a housing agency. One of the biggest demands was the transformation of Cabrini Green. This conflicted with the city, however, as they wanted Cabrini Green to remain as public housing. This led to a crossroad in the plans for Cabrini Green. Politicians and residents alike were unsure of how to handle this crisis. Eventually, they came to a conclusion of demolishing Cabrini Green, but not all at once. The first of the Cabrini Green high-rises came down in 1995, yet taxpayers and government officials had a lot of work to do if they wanted to continue down the road of urban renewal at Cabrini Green. They were faced with a socio-economic divide, with the poor residents still living in the dilapidated establishments and the rich developers looking to turn around the neighborhood which is located just blocks from Chicago's Gold Coast and would be prime real estate for developers to build on. The first tower at Cabrini Green coming down was a symbolic victory for Chicago residents. 
It showed that government powers were acting with public safety in mind. In 1999, the Chicago Housing Authority had regained control from the federal government of the city's urban developments. In conjunction with then Mayor Richard M. Daley, the authority announced its plan for transformation for the city's public housing. Part of this, this plan included the completion of the demolition of the high rises at Cabrini Green. The demolitions began in 2000, with the last of the residents of the development leaving in 2010, with the completion of the demolitions happening soon afterward. With the last tower finally gone in 2013, it is important to note that Cabrini Green's history is centered around its rise and fall, but it is still an improving area of Chicago. Many residents of the now demolished buildings realize that they were a dark spot in Chicago history. However, the road ahead is very bright. Centered between Chicago's flashy Gold Coast neighborhood and the downtown financial district, today Cabrini Green is a flourishing neighborhood. One of the most prominent developments to go up in the Cabrini Green neighborhood is the new City Mall, a $275 million mixed-use development that takes advantage of the rising income of the neighborhood. The development includes a bowling alley, movie theater, Dick's Sporting Goods, as well as many restaurants and stores. There is also an upcoming development for another mixed-use development closer to the side of Cabrini Green. Led by Texas-based Hunt Development Group, the development will cover 10 acres of the former Cabrini Green site. The development will include a 21-story private residential tower, as well as other mid-rise condominiums and low-rise townhomes. The Chicago Housing Authority has also announced plans for newer, improved housing in the area as they have committed to provide 217 market rate units, 82 affordable housing units, and 183 housing units for CHA tenants. Other upcoming nearby developments include a seven-story apartment building, as well as other private residential establishments set forth by Chicago-based company Brinshore Developments. The development is projected to cost $33 million. Furthermore, Canada-based Ani Group announced its plan to redevelop the 309-unit former Cabrini Green site building into luxury skyscrapers with 1,500 units. These stem off a 2016 call to action by the City of Chicago to develop 2,300 residential units spread across 65 acres in the Cabrini Green neighborhood. The City also included in its proposal that between 33 and 40 percent of units be reserved for public housing. Cabrini Green has seen many improvements in the 21st century and we can confidently say that greener pastures are ahead for the Cabrini Green. What was once a tale of demise and despair in the north side of Chicago quickly became a bright spot as politicians and constituents were able to do away with the dark high-rises of Cabrini Green and pave the way for new developments to come.